Welcome to the Sultanate of Oman. One of only two Sultanates in the world, Brunei being the other. If you think Oman is just another Middle Eastern desert destination with lots of camels, sand and oil, then think again. We drive along Sultan Qaboos Avenue in the capital city Muscat. Our first stop is the Sultan Qaboos Grand Mosque. Even though we are not Muslims, that does not mean we cannot appreciate the impressive architecture. The surrounding gardens are also pristinely manicured, and from there you can see the Supreme Court on the other side of the main road. Sultan Qaboos ascended to the throne in 1970 and has overseen a period of progress and prosperity in this Gulf country. Next was Matra. You might say that here something smells a bit fishy. We watched the fishermen bring in the catches of the day and chop up the fish. But there was not a shark in sight, much to my disappointment. After the fish market experience, we marveled at the nearby mountains that overlooked the harbour, making for a stunning view. The Sultan's ship happened to be docked at the port, and after taking that in, it was time to cross Al Bahri Road on the Corniche to visit the Matra Souk. Next up in Muscat, we were able to visit Sultan Qaboos's palace, the beautiful Al Alam Palace, a colourful building of interesting architecture that was well worth the stop. You can also explore the palace grounds and on either side of the Al Alam Palace, you can see the 16th century Portuguese forts, Mirani and Jalali, although you cannot visit them. There are forts all over Oman, and from a water sport perspective, plenty to do as well, but since time was limited, we opted for alternative activities. About a two hour drive from Muscat, you'll find what is known as the Wahiba Sands. After a bit of dune bashing, we visited a Bedouin home. The Bedouins are a nomadic desert tribe found throughout the Middle East. We were invited inside by our gracious hosts and enjoyed Omani coffee and dates and, of course, their camels. More camels later. We also visited the beautiful Wadi Bani Khalid, an oasis among the barren and dry desert. Oman is full of wadis. A wadi is an Arabic term referring to a valley. The wadis of Oman really are worth visiting and Wadi Bani Khalid's water is a turquoise-like colour similar to what you see at the big hole in Kimberley. We made sure to take plenty of pictures and videos and then I got up to one of the higher points just simply to admire the view. Later when we went to the southern part of the country, something that was very much on par was the Wadi Darbat. Just like Wadi Bani Khalid, the scenery is totally worth the visit. I'll show you more of the southern part of Oman later. We spent our fifth wedding anniversary high in the Jebel Shams. Jebel is the Arabic word for mountain, or at least I hope it is. My Arabic speaking friends, I ask for forgiveness if I've said something haram here. Jebel Shams is glorious. What you see here is one of Oman's true treasures. They call it their Grand Canyon. Next was Salala. Our hotel in Salala was the Crown Plaza, complete with a balcony overlooking the wonderful swimming pool, garden and beachside restaurant. Not to mention the stunning beach. We explored the city by visiting the Sultan Qaboos Mosque as well as his residence in the city. Both were nice archaeological sites to see, but not as impressive as the Muscat versions, which you might expect considering Muscat is the capital. We drove through the garden farms witnessing the banana trees, coconut palm trees and papaya trees, as well as a fierce looking swarm of bees. We stopped roadside to enjoy some papayas, bananas and coconuts, but not any honey. 
We also popped into the Al Husn Souk, where Ntandal's excellent negotiation skills once again ensured a good few bargains. That's all nice enough, but the real pleasures are found in the stunning Salala Mountains, or Jebel Sanham. One of the highlights was an extraordinary experience at what is called the location of gravity. Our driver stopped the car, put the gear lever in neutral, and suddenly we began to slide uphill. This is when you stop the car, the car moving by itself without any power. And uh, you think it's going up, but we don't know, is it optical illusion or is some some bowers like this? Okay, to our eyes, we are currently freestyling uphill. Okay, he says it's an optical illusion, but I'm looking back right now and it is clearly downhill. There's clearly absolutely no ways that that is downhill. We are so smooth, we slide uphill. Along the drive, we also spotted many camels, and I mean many. Told you there'd be more camels in this video. Camels are actually two humped, while the variety with one hump are called dromedaries, who make up more than 94% of the world's camel population. For the purposes of this piece, we'll just call them camels, even though my insides want to eat themselves because it's obviously erroneous. On our final day in Salala, we headed west. As we made our way through the stunning mountain range, we stopped along the way to see more camels in the wild and frankincense trees. Oman is pretty much frankincense central. The dramatic mountain scenery was rivaled only by our stops at two magnificent beaches. The first was Al Mugsail, and the second was the Fizaya Beach. Both were stunning with their white sands and turquoise waters. We also saw local fishermen at work and flocks of seagulls everywhere. Definitely reporting her to the animal anti-cruelty league. We just marveled at the surrounding mountain ranges. To make a comparison, the region west of Salala has many similarities to the Western Cape in South Africa. Oh, and they have cool caves too. This one is the Marnif Cave. As we headed back to our Salala Hotel, we made our way through the zigzag road in the mountains and just loved the breathtaking views of the mountains on one side and the Arabian Sea on the other. And then it was all over. It has been said that Oman is the jewel in the Middle East's crown. It's hard to argue, Oman is truly outstanding.